Kettle, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-N-I-E, -E, Kettle, K-E-T-T-L-E. -E. I'm the Public Relations Manager at Mount Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. Uh, so let's start with uh, what do we know, I mean, how do we know the hurricane has impacted us, or do we? Um, so we don't know if the hurricane had an impact on our current existing red tide bloom. Um, we take our Sarasota Healthy Beaches red tide cell counts at the beginning of the week. Um, so if you look on um, the red tide status report on FWC's site, you'll see our um, report from Monday. Um, we actually had background uh, low levels on the beaches this past week, but we do those samples on Monday, so we'll see next week if there's uh, been an increase or a, you know, see what kind of effect the hurricane might have had on the existing red tide bloom. What about current dead fish? Uh, are we seeing the kills, especially in Pinellas? Um, I've seen online that people are spotting um, fish kills, and if you go to our visitbeaches.org um, for our beach conditions reporting system, you'll see that there are reports of some fish kills up in the Pinellas area. Um, a lot of that will have to do with just the winds shifting and blowing fish um, back in towards shore. Last week we had offshore winds, so a lot of the uh, red tide toxins and the dead fish might have been kept offshore as the winds shift, then we see them coming back onshore. Can we predict what we might see next week? Um, we can't really predict what we'll see next week um, because it'll just depend on, um, you know, what the cell counts look like. We're not really able to predict um, exactly how the bloom will react. Um, FWC and USF have a three and a half day bloom movement prediction, um, but it's also been hard because it's been so cloudy, they've not been able to get real good satellite images of the bloom as well. So it is really hard to see what kind of impact the hurricane might have had. Was most of the testing done onshore and were they able to get out there yet just to take a few water samples? Yeah, so weekly we do our onshore testing on Sarasota beaches and that's what MOAT does. You know, there's other organizations up and down the coast that do different testing, but um, MOAT's testing on Sarasota beaches is weekly. Um, we are able to do offshore testing um, about once a month, um, and we haven't, that hasn't been scheduled this month, you know, anyways, that's actually, uh, it goes next week when they go offshore. Have you seen kind of a sense of optimism as far as the red tide goes? I know Noah did a uh, kind of a transecting, uh, transecting uh, uh, sampling earlier this week, I think Sunday and Monday, where they, they kind of went from South Sarasota all the way down to Collier County and collected samples out there, and they all showed low to background concentrations of Karenia brevis. Sure, so we've been seeing lower concentrations of Karenia, which has been, you know, it's been nice to see. Um, our test sites here at Moats campus, we have two. We've had definitely lower concentration counts on those, and then Sarasota Healthy Beaches, we've seen lower concentrations. Um, so that's certainly, you know, it's nice to see, but we're just not sure if that's because the bloom has broken up or because it's been offshore a little bit because of the offshore winds. I know the scientists with Moat said that the um, winds would bring it, the back winds after sure. Michael would bring it back. Yeah. Can we confirm that that's happening? Um, we can't because we're still awaiting our, um, our cell counts to see if it has come back. And we haven't gone out and done cell counts yet. We do that at the beginning of the week. Okay, so the next one will be Monday? Yep. Okay. So what do hurricanes usually do to a red tide? So hurricanes can affect a red tide um, a couple of different ways. Um, if, you know, there's a lot of wind um, that can actually break up the cells. So the cells are unarmored. So they can actually lice um, or break open due to lots of wind and churning up of the water. Um, but if the hurricane is, you know, on top of the bloom and dumping a lot of rain that can bring excess nutrients to a coastal system to, um, help you know provide um, nutrients to a red tide so there's a couple of different ways a hurricane could affect this hurricane didn't come over top of our red tide bloom directly so we did see a lot of wind but it's still hard to say exactly what um, effects this current hurricane had on the bloom do you know what that foam was Stephanie? so um sea foam happens you know with lots of wind and agitation um, and different particles and organic matter in the water can attach to you know the uh, the bubbles that are forming and form that foam. So definitely there could be, you know, concentrations of red tide toxins in the foam that's coming on shore, but you'll see lots of sea foam after any major storm because of the agitation of the water. Is it mixed in with red tide particles that could be airborne? So there are, there could be aerosolized toxins in the foam. Um, so that's why they recommend definitely, you know, kids and dogs should not play with sea foam because um, there definitely could be a concentration of red tide toxin in the foam. What about anything more toxic? Um, more toxic? No, it just, you know, foam forms with agitation of the water. Um, we had a lot of wind yesterday, so that's why we see a lot of foam. So there definitely could be red tide toxins in the foam. Thank you. You're welcome.